Hello, beautiful souls. How are you today? August 5th, 2024. We are in the midst of the 888 Lionsgate portal. If you're interested in an oracle cord reading, harnessing in this energy, we're getting some phenomenal readings. And let me just explain to you, like, this isn't like, um, so this, this information comes directly from your energy signature. So the ego plays no part in it. So there's no like, does Bobby really like me? No, nope. <laughs> we don't have that kind of stuff that comes through our energy signature readings. What we do have is what is truly flowing through your energy in the now moment. So it is very real. It's very raw. It is a great tool to to use for navigating your shadow work especially if you know there's some things and you haven't been able to nail it down right you haven't really been able to pinpoint it and most of the time that's because your egoic mind is not letting you go there because once you start decluttering it's um it's an it's an escalating evolution of process there. And eventually the end result is the ego gets shut up and sit down and no longer controls your life. So um, it really does help you navigate it. It really does help you uh, go, okay, yeah, this is where I need to put some focus and some energy and shut the ego up and do the shadow work. So if you're interested in a, an Oracle reading from me, energy signature reading, it's not live unless you request it to be, um, but it is recorded. Everything is start to finish. You get the recording and you get um, the images of the selected cards there's always cards that the team selects for you to specifically see and so you'll get that image and then the images of the description from the creator of the deck um, for those cards so if you're interested send me an email healing disclosures yt at gmail.com is the best place so today's chat is um divinely guided archangel metatron aka poppy um, I, I could feel that there was some things that needed to be touched on in the collective and, uh, the guidance was, you know, meditate and it'll come to you. And prior to the meditation, it came to me. <laughs> um, and it's basically shifting our perspective to live in the now with a grateful heart. And I'm going to relay to you kind of like where I was a couple years ago when I would hear people talk about living in the now with a grateful heart. Uh, it didn't really resonate with me because I had a lot of shadow work to do. And how I navigated that and then where we are now. So let's dive in. So a couple years ago, it seems like a couple years ago. Let, I retract that statement. <laughs> 2017 is when I was red pill. Around that same time frame, I started to, you know, dive in these rabbit holes. And if you've had that moment for yourself, you can probably relate to a lot of sleepless nights and a lot of WTFs and WTHs and how did this happen and what are we going to do about it and like all the things like you just feel so raw whenever you come to terms with what's been going on behind the scenes and so um, I, I had to get I had to find a way to work my way back to um like some normalcy. I was still working full time. Um, I was a supervisor at the time, had a pretty uh, grueling schedule and I, I needed to function better because in my off hours, I was, even when I wasn't diving down these rabbit holes, I wasn't sleeping because I couldn't get these images out of my mind. 
and these stories out of my mind about different organizations, different um, systems, really, and throughout the world. It wasn't about me. It wasn't really about my state or or just my country. It was everyone. This is like a global heavy weight that was on me. And really prior to that time, I had done some shadow work, but I didn't know it was called shadow work. And so, um, and it wasn't by choice, you know, not a lot of people really go, okay, like today's the day I'm going to dive into my trauma. Um, it came about because of, you know, life events. And so I didn't have a good grasp on any of that stuff. So fast forward a, a, a little while, um, a, a friend of mine really kind of introduced me to the revaluation of foreign currency stuff. And that was really more of a catalyst for me because um, that's a whole nother rabbit hole. And for me, it was so time consuming and I really had to um, develop my discernment because as with anything um, financial related, there was a lot of, you know, look here while I change this over here, you know, the shell game stuff. And it, there was a lot of, all of a sudden, there was all these experts. And, um, you know, I admittedly was like, I don't know nothing about nothing. I'm, I'm here to learn. And then what I ended up learning was they didn't know anything either. <laughs> so it was a good, it was a good opportunity for me, you know, and, and a good growth opportunity for me. So all this had transpired prior to um, my own QET session. And so uh, I go into my QET session and I, and I feel like I'm going to finally get, be able to get clarity on all these things that I hadn't been able to get answers to. But that just really donkey kicks you onto Ascension Highway where you are doing shadow work every single day, hot and heavy, if you're serious about it. And so much of what you thought mattered prior just doesn't matter anymore because you realize that it's stuff that's made um, based on lies, basically, or uh, in fat inflated type of information. It's really not what you thought it was. So I, I come out of the QET session and, um, you know, really looking forward to the Ascension process. And I think it's one thing. I think it's, you know, I know it's frequency and I know it's a higher consciousness is the goal and that developing Yeshua's original teachings, the teachings of origin, um, which are unity consciousness, Christ consciousness, compassion, kindness, non-judgment and no ego involved was going to require some growth. I was super excited about that. I really couldn't wait to um, escape this dimension for the fifth dimension. I wanted to definitely be on that, um, get my ticket punched for that. And, you know, it, when was the solar flash going to happen? So does any of this sound familiar to you? And have you just kind of been on this like negative time loop of, not getting answers, not feeling fulfilled, not feeling like you're getting um, any type of discernment, you know, that kind of stuff. If this totally resonates with you, definitely, definitely want to stay through to the end of this video. I'm going to give you some tips and tricks on how you can rescue yourself um, from these negative time loops. So I get donkey kicked onto Ascension Highway, right? And uh, my frequency is really zoom and it's really rising. And part of a higher consciousness being's uh, gifts and abilities is that higher frequency. Um, you are able to discern truth from lies much easier. You're also able to discern beings who do not possess a soul much easier and discern darkness, just evil energy versus 
of the light, good energy. And so that quickly taught me some very valuable lessons. I quickly had to adjust um, what was in my circle and who I was giving attention to. So as I'm basically, I call it inventory, take an inventory of my life. So I'm doing my shadow work. I'm decluttering uh, my life and my circle's much, much smaller. And um, so move on down the, the timeline a little bit. Now the crew, the ground crew has assembled and we have come together for the greater good and decided we're going to not be waiting on the rest of the world to get their shit together. We're going to start affecting positive change now. And it came about because we were super frustrated, which I'm sure you can relate to because I believe in my soul, in my heart, that more of us want to see the world function better in a unity consciousness way, in a loving way, then we want to see it divisive. And yet we're kind of put through the, the washing machine um, as those who have been elected and appointed um, drag us through all of these absurd policy changes and um, laws and things that really serve a minority, not the majority. And so um, out of that frustration, we just started looking for answers from our, our crew, from our guides. And so it came through pretty quickly. Like if you want to do something, just set your intentions to do it and it shall be done. And my, you know, my human brain was like, but who's going to physically do it? I, I still had not grasped the concept of um, setting intentions and that, uh, you know, different energetic bodies and different dimensions actually carry out lots of what we want done to co-create things. And so in, in the beginning, it was um, we were receiving guidance to help clear up and clean up um, and realign Huna Matea. And the different levels, um, surface, inner earth, middle earth. And so again, moving on down the timeline a little bit, um, after we had really, uh, by and large functionally cleaned up, energetically cleaned up the planet, it dawned on me <laughs> as a download that the, the statements that, that I believed and other people and basically about ascension and about the fifth dimension and all that uh, was false. <laughs> and this is how I came about that information. So we put through all this effort and time and we clean up the planet. And I already knew that while doing that work, that the soul of Gaia, Gaia had self-sacrificed. Her soul needed, had had so much damage and trauma that she needed to go on to be healed. And the planet that she was with, which was the third dimension planet, would be soulless. And that, the timeline trajectory for the lower dimension planet was that it would implode within about a thousand years. And so that is where we have the dimension split, right? So you have the lower dimension and then the higher dimension. So those that are on the ascension path or fourth dimension headed into fifth dimension, or they're already in fifth dimension frequency wise. And then you have a whole host of people that have no clue what they're doing and they didn't soul contract, but they have free will choice. And so they're trying to navigate where do I fit? Where do I fall in? And so um, we we were doing all this work and I thought, well, what sense does it make for us to completely clear, cleanse, realign, and release all these trapped souls of Huna Matea to then abandon it? Like, why would we do all this work for ourselves, our physical form, and also the planet 
physical form and energy body to just leave to go to the fifth dimension. So it came in waves, it came in bits and pieces, but eventually we got that we don't go anywhere. That we need to really stop being so down on the place that we live because this is new earth. This is the earth that continues. And those beings that do not fit into the ascension path and don't have the frequency that can um, sustain the higher frequencies, they continue on the lower timeline. And that will also align with um, the lower frequency planet and the lower frequency experiences. So not every soul wanted to have this ascension journey as a an aspect of their soul contract others can opt in then you have a whole host of beings walking around the planet that are not eligible because they're npcs non-player characters they are ops which are organic portals they have traded their soul away and are in such service to self that they don't qualify or they're just dark souls and this is a negative polarity life and it's not for them. So there's a lot that fall into that cat, those latter categories. So I, I knew that source would not have us putting so much energy and work into ourselves and our planet. If we were to not stay together, it was a symbiotic relationship and it still is. And so I raised my hand and said, for a long time, every time my eyes opened and I was still here, <laughs> um, I was very disappointed. It was a bummer. I was like, oh, can't believe I still woke up here. I'm doing all the things and I still woke up here. But it was because I was listening to the wrong people. And I really was, you know, going off of that, but also invested in the answers. And so I couldn't really get like straight answers. It had to come in time. And that time was, it's very specific to the, the being. If you're doing the work and, you're, and your frequency is raising and you're going through your shadow work and you're evolving at all these different pieces of the pie will fall into place. And then your perceived reality looks a whole lot different, feels a whole lot different, resonates a whole lot differently than where you began. So as you go along doing your shadow work, you, you of course correct away from all the hopium, right? Because you go within, you learn to go within for truth. We're taught that all truth comes from outside of us, but we are to seek out truth from um, books and uh, resources that are, you know, validated and and whatnot and if this journey has taught us anything it's to question everything so when you look back and actually see that the same um, dark company owns 90 percent of the publishing houses then you understand that every word every bit of content put in the books can also align to sell a false narrative so you're not definitely for 100% going to get truth just because you find it within the pages of a book. So, I mean, that was another thing that we had to uh, do shadow work about, you know, because I mean, I went to college, I graduated, I, I've had a, a professional license and career for a very, very long time. And I had to come to terms with the fact that a lot of what I was taught and practiced on is Luciferianism. Plain and simple. It just is. It's not my fault that it's that way, but it is that way. So the ascension cycle that the planet is on is a 25,000 year cycle. Nothing can be done to stop that. There are some things that can slow it down and can speed it up, but it doesn't get halted. It doesn't get stopped unless the planet stops existing. 
So we go through the planet does its thing. And then this is the first time in history of Earth that the planet ascends with the people not having to go through an extinction event. In times prior and the cycles prior, the planet had an extinction event that wiped off most of living things from the surface of the planet and life was then reintroduced back to the surface of the planet in time in lots and lots of time many many years so the more you understand the actual mechanisms of the ascension and that it is multiple layers the planet ascends the people ascend um the animal kingdom ascends so in the higher consciousness and in, in higher dimension of fifth dimension, unity consciousness and, and Christ consciousness prevail. And so we lose some of the low frequency and low vibrational animals because they cannot maintain that frequency. We also gain new animals that are higher frequency and higher consciousness and could not be um, seen, felt, sensed, or interacted with in any way, shape, or form in the lower frequencies. So a dimension is tied to the frequency range. That's another thing that it took a long time for me to grasp. The dimensions are tied to a frequency range. It is not like, okay, I'm, I'm tired of the third dimension. So I'm going to get in my car and I'm going to drive, or I'm going to buy a plane ticket and I'm going to fly to the fifth dimension. That's not really how it works. <laughs> it would be easier if it did, but it does. That's not how it works. So once you understand the actual machinations, uh, you see that it really does all your ascension is all about what you're doing in your life with your shadow work and how you're raising your frequency because it is your frequency that dictates what dimension you're in. So if you're pissed off because nothing's happening, I need you to go to the mirror and talk to yourself and have a, a heart to heart. You want things to happen. It's time for us to make some shit happen. That's what I had to do. I knew at a certain point that all these people that said all this stuff that they were going to do, that was going to change things. They weren't, they had no intention of doing it because they were poorly motivated. They were motivated for the wrong reasons. Their motivations were service to self. And that was not going to bear fruit in my mind. And that was not something I wanted to align with anyway. I wanted to be in service of others always, 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 ever since I was very little. And that's exactly why I had follow up the calling to be a healer and become a registered nurse. So here I am completely having to redefine lots of aspects of my life that I thought were like core components to living. And then had to understand that if you lost every single thing, your clothing, your home, your cars, your job, your health insurance, all this stuff, if you lost it all, and all you had left to depend on was you. Is the you that you see in the mirror going to be able to take you through to the finish line? So that's where I started putting my energy. Because you see, I had put my energy in all those other things before, which strengthened them and weakened me. So that's all part of the the matrix that's part of the false narrative is that you give your pieces of yourself away because that's what society expects for you to do to quote unquote be successful and at the end of the day there's nothing left for you that keeps you very weak and it keeps you very stressed out and in a state where you feel a lot of the low vibrational emo emotions and feelings which keeps you tied to that negative time loop and the frequency of a lower dimension so you're never going to see anything of the higher dimensions I want you to really think about that. If you're sitting around judging people all day and all night and pointing fingers at this political party and that political party or this color person or that color person, like if you're that 
person, which if you're watching me, you probably aren't. But if you are, it's those low vibrational things that you are, that are cultivating more of that in your life. You may have heard the saying, where your thoughts go, your energy follows, your energy flows. Where your thoughts go, your energy flows. And that's a true statement. What you allow to take up space in your mind that d dominates your thoughts, the universe is going to keep bringing that to you because that's what you're thinking about. That's what you're cultivating. That is the seeds that you are sowing in your mind. So if you want to see change, you're going to have to be willing to change a lot. So there are people now that are working through detaching. They're working through who they used to be, trying really, really hard to fully embody who they're meant to be on a soul, spiritual level, on an energy body level. So it's all frequency related. See, there's a lot of work that gets done that's physical work. There's a lot of work that gets done that's very methodical and it's spiritual. But all that is tied to frequency as well. None of it is standalone. You, you have to have all of the pieces of this machine moving um, in coordination to be successful. So when you fully and completely pivot from all the low vibration, low frequency aspects of life, um, you know, the life that we have told we had to have, then you start to anchor the higher frequency. And then that is where your perception, your perceived reality can shift. So I'm going to break that down for you. If you're someone who has had a lifetime of psychic attacks and physical attacks, I mean, these things tend to go hand in hand. Um, very rarely do you have someone receiving psychic attacks. They're not also being abused in one way, shape or form. So then that is where your defenses are up. Your guard is up. It's what you expect when anything new or different, different starts to happen to you. You think, oh, I'm getting attacked again. You know, like who's after me now? So you're in this egoic mindset of being a victim, always having to be defensive, always having to go into battle. Right. And those are all disempowering, low frequency, low vibrational loops that we stay on. So even if you're doing your, your yoga every morning and you're vegan and you're meditating, but this is your life on a psychic attack, spiritual basis, you always feel like you're a victim and you stay perpetually feeling like you're being victimized and disempowered that builds up hate and vengefulness and lots of other low vibrations. So you see like they're just layering the low vibe feelings on top of low vibe feelings and it's just weighing you down. The opposite side of that spectrum is the supreme spiritual being. And I don't mean supreme like better than someone else. I mean, you have risen above in a frequency that you're considered supreme in your protections because your frequency is higher. Your processing of energies is better. It's more efficient. Your discernment is fine-tuned and always engaged. And you are no longer being bullied by your ego. So that's a huge thing. Whenever you can, number one, recognize this is your ego talking and shut your ego up when your ego tries to chime in to pull you away from source or to pull you from higher consciousness to lower consciousness, then you are really, really doing the work that you need to do and don't give in. Keep pushing back to your ego. The other thing is, is that there's... A, a transition that will occur where all of a sudden when you're doing your shadow work you will work through some trauma you'll work through some crap and you realize that 
the things triggered you about whatever that event was before no longer have power over you because you've dealt with it. And so there's not a trigger there anymore. So you've been released. So you're no longer feeling like you're a victim to that event anymore. And that to me is super motivating. If you have been someone who has been really put through the ringer, you know, like none of us really have great lives that we sold contract for. Like we just want to be like, I'm going to have a harder life than you. And I, I don't know. I don't know why we all of us sold contract at such hard lives, but we did because this is just such a gangster planet. We're like, I'm going to get it all done in one life, which is impossible, but didn't keep us from trying, I guess. So you lose the triggers, which in turn empowers you because you're no longer being um, manipulated like a little hand puppet. So when someone can, you know, come at you and call you names or accuse you of things or all the things that whatever they are that used to set you off to spiral down. They no longer have power over you because you've done your shadow work and you're no longer triggered and you just go, yeah, well, that's your perspective and that's not my timeline and you go the other direction. Because you understand now, you don't control other people. You don't under you don't control their how they receive your message, and you don't control how they treat you, with the exception of choosing to engage with them or not. That's where you enforce your healthy boundaries. Healthy boundaries aren't for other people to honor and respect because we don't control them. Healthy boundaries are for you to make mental note of like, okay, I have asked so-and-so three times now to not talk to me about blah, 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 or to not insinuate that I am going to do blah, 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 or maybe to not tell me what I'm going to do, but maybe ask me if I'm going to do it. And they continually tromp all over that boundary. So it's time for me to enforce my healthy boundary and disconnect from them altogether. And it's a disconnect of the cord, the energy cord that connects you to. It's it's not engaging through text, through phone, through email, in any way, shape, or form. No energy exchange at all. Then you go the, the other direction and you feel better. And that is your sign that you have done what your soul needed you to do. And you will get the rewards of that. When we stop giving our power away, when we stop being a doormat for society, when we stop allowing everyone's feelings to matter more than our own, that is whenever we stand in our power, speak our truth, reclaim our sovereignty, and we are then able to level up on a soul level. And this happens over and over and over and over again. You ring the bell. The next time you look up, there's another bell a little bit higher up. You got a little bit more climbing to do. So you got to get rid of the ego. Ego death is required for ascension. And I'll get to why in a minute. You have to deal with your shadow work so you're no longer triggered by every little thing. Because you have to be more in control of your mind and your energy, because the higher frequencies, what is in your mind is instantly manifested. Think about that. If you're always thinking about everyone being vindictive and everyone taking advantage of you and everyone abusing you and all these negative things, then that's what's going to keep knocking on your door. Vindictive, manipulative, abusive people. They don't exist in the fifth dimension, so you won't either. So you got to take your power back. You got to not be triggered. You got to shut your ego up and transition your perspective from victimhood, venge, revenge, um, always going and, you know, putting your armor on to go into battle to love and gratitude and forgiveness these are the things that you want to really, really, really focus on. So once you have done your love, forgiveness, and gratitude of all your shadows, and you can step off the negative time loop that you've been on, 
Um, and that is exactly where I found myself at one point in time with all these like RV groups and stuff, you know, they were very monop- uh, manipulative about the time. Like they wanted you to be in the room at a certain time. They didn't want you asking questions. They just want you to listen and yes, sir. Yes. I mean, you know, like I felt so much of a soul suck from those things. As soon as I said, this shit's crazy. And I left all that. I immediately had this big boost in my energy because I took my power back. I was no longer just feeding it all to all this craziness. So when you realize that there are things you can do to make yourself feel better and it requires big change and big commitment, but you are definitely capable of doing this. And then you start to move further and further away from the negative timeline stuff, from the low frequency stuff, from the things that don't make you feel good and you're moving toward the things that do make you feel good. And so you start to realize that love, true love for yourself and for your fellow mankind, animal kingdom, the planet, water, insects, really does make you feel better. And love is the key. Love is the strongest power that any of us have. Love. Love is the key. And I'm not talking about like saying I love you to everybody because how genuine is that? It doesn't feel very genuine to me. I can have love for a people, but I don't say that I love everyone because that just doesn't feel genuine. Because honestly, I don't love NPCs. I don't love dark souls. I don't love karmic people in my life that although they fulfilled their soul contract and I gave them love for doing that, I don't love them for the beings that they are because they're, you know, not good. So I love my fellow brothers and sisters that are of the light, that are strong, that are warriors, that are in alignment to source creator. That is where I put my love, but I also send love out to those struggling and I send love out to those in flux and I send love out to those dark beings in the sense that they need love too in a general way, but I'm not like, I just love everybody. I don't do that. That's just my own personal preference. When you're healing, you're feeling, feeling is healing. When you allow yourself to feel, then you remember what it's like to also be loved. For me, I had a a long time where my heart didn't receive love and it didn't really send out love. It was walled up and shut off from the world. The world, I had just been hurt too much. And that was just not in my um, plans for life ever be hurt again. So I just shut down my heart. So my mind would say, yes, I love you. Oh yeah, I love you. I appreciate you. You All those things. And those are true. I just never let it really get down to the heart level. That's where a lot of my shadow work had to to deal with. I had to allow myself to feel in a true and authentic way. And that allowed me to heal. You have to feel it. You have to feel the hurt. You have to feel the heartache. You have to feel the pain. You have to feel the rejection. And I don't say live there. I'm not asking you to put in a change of address to heartache. I want you to just deal with it. So if you are in that position and you don't know how to deal with something that caused you so much trauma and so much pain, love, forgiveness, and gratitude is the way to do it. And you can do any of those three concepts First, it doesn't matter which order you do them in. What matters is, is that you do them authentically. And the truth of the matter is, is that we do soul contract the majority of the events in our life and they happen for us to be able to grow. And if you can't give gratitude for anything else, you can give gratitude for that because that, that helps elevate you on a soul level. And that being didn't have to honor that soul contract. They had free will choice just like you did. And they could have bowed out at any time, which would have kind of left you in a bit of a lurch in your learning curve, right? So the goal is fifth dimension living, right? And when I, when I started out on all this, I literally thought I was going to be 
picked up at point at some point in time or I'd go to sleep and I'd wake up there. I'd wake up in a different place. I no longer believe that. And initially it was a little disappointing because I was looking around. I was like, this doesn't look like the fifth dimension I was told about. Could I speak to the manager? <laughs> but it's getting there. So fifth dimension, higher consciousness, unity consciousness, living requires a very deep soul expansion. And soul expansion occurs when you're doing your shadow work and you really get into your heart chakra and you're opening it wide and you're feeling the feels and you feel love. I had a couple of foxes that were on this property um, when I first got here. And they were very brave, brazen and I have little dogs and they were coming in and they, I had some fear, I had some trepidation. They didn't seem to care that the human was right there. I felt like they were hunting my dogs. Well, come to find out there was one dark one, like, you know, like didn't have a soul, kind of a dark leader. And then the the younger one had a soul, but he was being manipulated and controlled by the older one. I got that one day. And the younger one was asking for help, wanted to be released from this, didn't want to be controlled and didn't want to do mean things, didn't want to be um, a low vibration being in essence. Did he say that? No, he didn't. That wasn't the message. The message was, I'm being controlled. I don't want to do these things. And the rest of it came in downloads. So I cleared him and I released the contracts he was under, realigned him to the light, and they went their separate ways. And I cried. So the same foxes that gave me some fear a week or two before that, when I went through being really compassionate about the situation, not being judgmental, and coming at it from a heart chakra, heart perspective, I, I, I saw the kindness that they needed. And I sent them love and I sent them healing. And one, the older one, the dark one passed away. And the younger one got him a girlfriend and he's living a happy life. And I'm just here to tell you that if you'd have told me that I would have done that two years ago, I'd have laughed in your face. But that is what soul expansion looks like. You really do take on different characteristics and different methods of operation. And you're supposed to. How does the world change if we don't change? And being afraid to change, first of all, fear is false. Like there's nothing to truly fear. You have to always face your fears. But being afraid to change, but yet, you want to be where everything is different. It makes no sense. How are you going to get from point A to point B? If you're afraid to change, but you want to live in a, in a dimension where everything has changed, how are you going to get there? So unity consciousness requires a lot of soul growth, right? Because I can tell you again, raising my hand, when I first went into this, really intensive journey of soul growth. I was very judgmental. I didn't have any trust for anyone. I, I didn't trust anything or anyone. And I didn't necessarily feel like a victim, but I also felt very targeted. This was before any QET session or anything like that. This was before any of the energy work that I do now. In life, I felt targeted. Now, I had to work through all of that. I really did. It, it was second nature for me to be very judgmental of people. And I've said this before, the book, my professional career, was a night charge nurse in the emergency departments. And I worked in many all across the country. And you really do get, I mean, that's part of the job description is to be judgmental. You know, you're judging in triage, you're judging whether it's um, enough to go straight back. You're judging that someone's telling you the truth about their pain. 
you're judging whether it is what you, your eyes are showing you. So it, it, it was tough, but it was worth it. I don't miss being judgmental. I don't miss being judgmental. And I catch myself now and I, and I correct myself whenever I catch myself being judgmental. I'm like, Oh, sorry. I'm being judgmental. Forgive me. Like immediately go LFG because it's not who I want to be. I've been, I spent my time doing that and it benefited me in zero ways. So demonstration of service to others is what we're looking for. Loving all beings and things. That's unity consciousness. One day, last fall, I was at a friend's house and there was a fly on the inside of the screen. And I got up from across the room and walked right up to the fly and I opened my hand and I cupped it and the fly crawled into my hand and I opened the screen and I let the fly out the house. After I did that, I said, I've never done that before. <laughs> and I don't know why I did it now. It just felt like the right thing to do. Before that, I can't tell you that I really had any love loss for flies, but I didn't want to, it didn't have to die just because it's on the wrong side of the screen. Love and appreciation for all living things. There's no competition, no judgment, and no ego. There's no judgment, no competition, and no ego. So in the fifth dimension, we all have a lot of different roles. We wear a lot of different hats, and there's a lot of things going on, and we're accomplishing a lot of stuff. And none of us work independently. None of us could do anything that we do alone. Not for very long and not very successfully either. But there's also not a competition of look what I did or I did it better than you or whatever. We have energy that we put toward a common goal. And then that common goal is accomplished and we celebrate it together. Okay. So if you're super competitive, always have to have the last word and always want to be the, the, you know, the first name called and, and the, the one on top, you have shadow work to do. That those are matrix um, ways of being that do not serve you as well as you think it does. It serves you, but it serves only you. It doesn't serve the collective. And that's not what higher consciousness living is about. When you can go through your trials of life and LFG them, so you're giving love to yourself and all other parties involved. You're forgiving yourself and all other parties involved, and you're giving gratitude to yourself and all parties involved in an authentic way. That is whenever you really do elevate your understanding of community, of living. So when you are in a higher consciousness community, so my 5D self, we are in the fifth dimension, obviously, that 5D self. There's about 30,000 people in that dimension right now. We're seeding the, that new dimension. It's not that it's a new dimension. It's a new life force populating that dimension. <clears throat> because, again, everything is cyclical and there was an ascension event out of the fifth dimension as well. So you have fully supported divine masculine and divine feminine with a healed inner child. There is no more dating games. Like there's no more um, play in the field and, and all of this stuff. You have a fully embodied love and respect for yourself as a divine feminine or divine masculine. And you have worked on your counterpart of divine feminine and divine masculine, and you have worked on healing your inner child. So you're not triggered. The ego's on an issue. You're fully balanced. You know your place. You know your, your role. You know that you're here for a bigger purpose than keeping score and getting your feelings hurt over little things. And so it's that soul growth that makes it possible. You can't get there without it. So people that are really, you know, heels dug in on um, not doing their shadow work or not really doing it to a completeness, you're doing yourself a disservice. You are part of the problem. 
you are part of the hurdles in your way of your own ascension. Don't blame anybody else but yourself. So no one comes to save you. You save yourself by way of doing your shadow work. Plain and simple. The easiest, most effective and efficient way to do it is love, forgiveness, and gratitude. You can spend a whole lot of time doing it different ways, but you want to get through it, right? Like we spent enough of our life living in turmoil. You want to get through this and let it be a part of your past that you don't go back and revisit. That's why I'm not a fan of past life regression. Who wants to go back and do that again? You don't have to, to deal with the shadow work aspect of it. So if you're avoiding healing and you're avoiding dealing with these things, then you're actually delaying your ascension. The concept of all living beings living together in unity and harmony is really beautifully um, depicted in the Marvel comic universe. I have no affiliation with it. I'm just a fan. Um, Ten Rings in Shang-Chi. They go to um, a hidden um, dimension. And in that dimension, it is truly depicted with the big, big lions and the nine-tailed foxes and the dragons and everyone's coexisting with the humans. And they're all very, very in touch with their spiritual and energy bodies. And they're using it for the greater good. So as we go through our our life, we're all, all the soul beings have higher consciousness guides. So you have your guardian angel, you have your fire dragon, you have lots of uh, etheric help and energy help. And as your frequency rises, you become more aware of them because you can, it's not so much of a frequency mismatch. So when your frequency gets in range, you can start to sense them and then you start to feel them and see them. So uh, not long ago, maybe a week ago, I knew months ago that I had a lion and tiger and a cheetah and um, different dragons and dire wolves, all sorts of different guides, right? Um, but I didn't know, I didn't remember. I don't even know if I got to the point of asking their names. But at any point, last week, I was sitting at the table and I felt a very heavy like head, it felt like when a pet puts their head on your, on your leg, but it felt really big and there was nothing that I saw, but I felt it. And that this happened a couple of times back to back. So I asked a soul sister of mine and she said, yeah, that's your lion. So we were in a more of a frequency range that we could then start to communicate. And uh, I'm very aware of him now and my other big cats. And they, um, they're they super excited that I finally can have a energetic um, exchange with them. They've been there with me the entire time. But my frequency had to be in a certain range to sense, see, or feel them. So now you have the rise in the collective consciousness, it's well into the fifth dimension range. And you have a lot of people that are saying, I see things now that I, it wasn't there before. Or they say, I saw something. And then five seconds later, it was gone. What's happening? Well, cause you're, you're shifting, right? So it's not fully anchored. You're not fully anchored into the fifth dimension, but it's, it's coming. It's phasing. That's what the term is. You're phasing. So one of my soul sisters went for a walk and she's like, there's houses in the neighborhood that I've never seen before. Like all of a sudden they're like full blown houses. And I was like, she's like, what's like, I'm confused by this. And I said, well, I believe what's happening here is that you're anchoring more of the higher consciousness frequency where before you went through a certain phase what you were dealing with was mostly lower consciousness frequency. So you could never really see it. It was a frequency mismatch. These are higher frequency homes with higher frequency beings that live there. And now you can appreciate and sense and, and have a feel for them. They've been there all along, but they were out of your range. And she immediately said, I know I'm, that resonates so deeply with me. Like 
I don't even need to ask for it to be confirmed, which, but she did and due diligence and it was confirmed. And so if you're like, got your standard walking trail or around your neighborhood or whatever, and you're noticing things that are different, congratulations, because your frequency is rising and you're seeing things that you are more of a frequency range of, which is a higher consciousness and it's ascension at the end of the day, ascension is rising, right? And so that's what it is. The other thing I want to mention is the animal kingdom itself. Okay. Not all animals have souls. Some do, some don't. Not all animals are in the fifth dimension because not all animals are higher consciousness beings. Some are lower vibrational beings and they're going to continue to stay in lower vibrational dimensions. They can't exist in the higher dimension higher consciousness dimensions we'll have new animals that we have not been able to see before because we were in a lower vibratory state in a lower frequency state dimension and so as we rise we'll see new all new animals the other really cool thing is that that symbiotic harmony that we will all have as unity consciousness beings with respect love and reverence for all living things there is gonna no longer be um wildlife or livestock like fenced in um like for prime example it's depicted in the movie i mentioned um 10 rings where the animals just lay there they're just with you they're, they, they come and go freely okay they're not fenced in they're there because they want to be there in the fifth dimension, we have dolphin assisted birthing centers all over. And so your higher, your, your five D pregnancies, we all have them now. Um, you're delivering in a lagoon dolphin assisted births. The dolphins connect to the soul of the baby and the mom has her own dolphin. Each soul has their own dolphin. And they come in when they need to. There's no fencing. There's no cages. There's no tanks. The whales and the dolphins come in because they want to be there. Because they're a vibratory match. And there is a unity consciousness. There's nothing to fear. And so everyone's working together for the greater good. And it's a beautiful process. The, the pregnancies aren't quite as long in the fifth dimension. They're more like seven to eight months. And uh, growth is also uh, quickened. And labor itself is much less uncomfortable and very, very family oriented, very holistic, very, uh, you know, at one with nature and basically painless so it's been it's been a great thing in, in the fifth dimension i'm one of those um that have learned i've been a shaman in many many past lives male and female and my grand whose wife buffalo Kaffelman, i've learned under her many 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 thousands of years and so I deliver and she overwatches and we have lots of apprentices in the family. Um, but that's part of what my role is, is that I'm helping to deliver our 5D babies. It's beautiful. It's magical. So when we all coexist, it is respect, right? We are all shoulder to shoulder with one another. None of us see us as any more important than the next. So I can sit on the ground like this happened the other day. I was sitting on the ground and there was a bee that got too wet in the pool. And so I took the bee out and I, and I kept trying to just put it on like a, a blade of grass to dry off. It was too heavy. I had to give it more support than that. And finally, I put it in the right place, I guess, and it was able to dry dry off enough to again take take flight again to vibrate and and move on, um, pollinating things. And I, I just had a different level of respect 
and appreciation and compassion for that bee. And I, I do, I have compassion for, for animals that used to just freak me out because I see things differently. I process things differently. Why? Because I've done the work and my heart chakra is feeling. I'm not closed off to feeling. I have not, when you closed off in that way, how compassionate can you be if your heart's not a part of it? I think it's vital. So I implore you to do the work to get there. Some of it that you're going to go through is clearing your mind of negative clutter. So if you have these constant negative thoughts, we have to do the shadow work to get to declutter your mind. You want to declutter your vocabulary of disempowering and negative words. Words have power. I have a video about that. Um, other people have covered it as well. It's super interesting. And we're actually taught in school to use words that disempower us. So think about that. Um, you also want to clear your energy field. Like I do, I, I do QET sessions for people. I clear their energy field and then they know what clear feels like. And then their abilities are able to, uh, zoom. They're also able to have a really good, um, daily energy hygiene practice. And it gets them in a place where they're empowered to enforce their healthy boundaries because they really appreciate being clear and they really appreciate not having other people throw their negative energy on them. You also want to clear up your friend and family circle. Most of us have people in our circles in our lives that are of these other care categories, NPCs, organic portals, and karmic soulless beings. They're there in your life or they were in your life for a reason, for an event. Many times it's been soul contracted, but once that event is done, you're supposed to pivot away from them. They're not supposed to be with you forever because they're karmic and they don't have a soul. So that requires, again, that that's like your personal inventory. You have to go through and check soul statuses on people. And this is this is a tough one because sometimes it's your husband. Sometimes it's your children or your parents. It's sometimes it's easier if it's like a coworker or a neighbor or your boss, but it's still difficult. It's a difficult aspect, but it has to be done because you want to know who you're dealing with and you want to know who you are giving access to your energy. That's the big deal. Um, Let's see, clearing and decluttering your personal spaces. So that's your home, your office, and your vehicle. You spend a lot of time in your home, your offices, and your vehicles. You don't want to be surrounded by things that are draining your power. You want to make sure that you have control over those spaces. And clearing out the shadows from the trauma, the judgments, and all the low frequency emotions that we go through growing up here. It's just part of it. I'm not blaming anyone. This is not a blame or guilt trip. I'm just saying it's a part of us growing up, but it doesn't have to be a part of your life forever. It's up to you to do the work to clear it out. These steps will bring you through the soul evolution required in order to really fully um, encompass the love, forgiveness, and gratitude so that you can benefit from it as well. And then you're able to effectively do your shadow work. So when you're really putting forth the effort, it shouldn't take more than a couple of days to work through any one event of shadow work. People that are saying, I've been going through the dark night of the soul for 10 years or something like that. They haven't put forth the work. And I can tell you for 30 years, my, my husband, my twin flame died in an accident two and a half months after we were married in 1994. I was 21. He was 23. For 30 years, I did not deal with that trauma. I had a walk-in soul of a prior incarnation that, that walked in to help me live because my original soul was just so fractured. I had to do a lot of healing. And that's what I had to go through when I was first cleared, but it's so worth it. And I don't know why I put it off for so long. I just kept avoiding it. 
and it never goes away. If you're avoiding something, it's not going to go away. It's going to keep circling them back around. It's going to keep knocking on the door until you deal with it. So when we look at timelines, that's another big question I get often. Like what's going on with the timelines? Well, we all have billions of timelines. Every time you make a decision that is service to others, you are jumping to a higher timeline. And every time you defend your sovereignty and you speak your truth, you're jumping to a higher timeline because those are aspects of higher consciousness beings. They don't lie. They don't betray. They don't manipulate. And also don't let people lie, betray, and manipulate them. They're authentic and they're sovereign. And so the more you stand in that authenticity and sovereignty, the more you are rewarded and you level up on a soul level. But whenever you make service to self decisions that only benefit you and actually could cause harm to others, you're jumping to a lower timeline. So people are doing this, this dance all the time. Every time you make a decision, you literally change in timeline. But as a collective of people, we're also on timelines. Lots of those timelines have been converged. And there's really just three main timelines right now. And so that is moving rapidly as well um, because of all the events. The more that we can, as a collective, raise consciousness, which we've done a really great job. It's in the 5D range now. That is anchoring that 5D frequency of perception. And so that's why you're seeing things, they feel different. Things are not as heavy as they used to be, even though the mainstream media will show you that the world is just in chaos. And yes, the world is, but it is all for a purpose. I know it's crazy to look at what's actually happening in our world. It is all for a purpose. It is all to serve different purposes. It's not necessarily your timeline, but it's it's for a, a reason. And so the more you can remember that the dimension is tied to frequency and frequency is consciousness and to keep going within and doing your shadow work, then you get to anchor in that higher consciousness because that's where you're putting your work, right? Just like I said before, where your thoughts go, the energy flows. And I also want to touch on the solar flashes. So there was a there was a belief. Um, I, I think probably many people still believe that there's just going to be like this big snap, huge solar flash. It's going to wipe all these negative beings off the planet. And a while back, that was one of the possible ways that the shift was going to occur. But as a collective, thanks to all the way showers, star seeds and light workers, give yourself a pat on the back. We raised the consciousness of enough beings that they started to do the work themselves and source creator had mercy on us. And so we didn't have to have this big sickening, like rapturous event, it's been coming in waves and solar waves instead of a solar flash. And that's why you've been seeing since 2012, um, gradual but consistent increase in solar activity, CME activity. So now it's daily. We're having big boosts of energies daily. And it is because we're coming to the, the end of that 25,000 year cycle. So I don't, uh, at this point in time, um, I do resonate with that the overall consciousness is going to get to a certain level. And also the solar activity will get to a certain level where we, as a population of people, get very sleepy. We go to sleep wherever you are everything's taken care of, everything is super safe and you rest. And when you wake up, things are different. I do believe that because things are actually already different now. If you have eyes to see and ears to hear and those lower frequency beings that cannot be in the higher frequency will no longer exist. So that brings me to the next point. All those subcategories, the closer we get to the shift, 
all those subcategories of beings that are not ascending, the NPCs, the OPs, the soulless and the dark souls, they will be exiting this dimension rapidly, however that looks. You have probably noticed this already. <laughs> um, illnesses, crashes, self-destructive behavior, self-harm, addictions, overdoses, various fatal conditions. Most of the criminals that are losing their life in acts of, of defiance or self-destructive behavior, um, the shooters, um, the mass shooters, um, the you know, people strapping bombs to them, all of them that I've asked about or every single one of them have been NPCs. They all have a self-destruct program. They are all controlled by negative AI. And it's it's really easy for them to be activated. They've all been activated to carry out their programming and that programming can be sped up and it can be um, manipulated however negative AI wants to do that. So I highly recommend you cutting ties and moving energetically far, far away from NPCs and OPs in your life because they will self-destruct. They usually go out in a blaze of glory with lots of chaos and you really don't want to have any part of that and nor do you need to see because you can't save them from their existence. You can't save them from that. Like it's it's organic matter, but they, they don't have a soul and they were never, they were created for this purpose. It's not for you to change. It's not your timeline. So pivot and go the other direction. I don't, I don't care what label they have. That's another matrix thing. Oh, but it's my dad or, oh, but it's my son or like whatever. You really need to distance yourself from these because there is not a good ending for them. Period. I didn't create the situation, but it is what it is. Um, and we have to be very, I think, proactive in how we approach these situations because otherwise you could get yourself into a bad situation. Um, on fifth dimension, Huna Matea, the current population, like I said, is around 30,000. It was around 20,000 about six months ago when I checked in. So uh, you you may have had a 5D pregnancy. I am on my second 5D pregnancy that I'm aware of. We were only made aware of this um, somewhere around October, November of last year. Although it started prior to that, um, other, other beings <laughs> that have YouTube channels that kind of share their story, they're, they're tuned in and tapped in. They were talking about it uh, around the summertime as well. So <clears throat> 10,000 more lives have, have been, um, arrived on uh 5d Huna Matea, and that's super exciting. Um, we are seeding new earth. And I was told that a long time ago, I was told that in my uh, initial downloads that we would be seeding new earth. And that was why it was super important to attract my, my soul family members, which are the ground crew. Um, so that we could help co-create those communities for the, the arrivals of the, in the fifth dimension. So it's very exciting. Again, we have lots of, um, 5d pregnancies and they are by and large dolphin assisted births, um, with, uh, basically the shaman, the midwife, if you want to speak of it that way. Um, and then we have a lot of souls that, did not incarnate in this lifetime, like in this space, but they had ascended. They had checked all their boxes for their soul growth and they've been hanging out um, either on the starship or in other 5D dimensions because um, earth doesn't, isn't the only one and they're coming to rejoin the family. And so you have that group of people as well. So um, it's super exciting. And what I really want to implore you to give you as a, as homework, I used to be very disappointed when I woke up every day and I had to force myself to be grateful for things just to change my perspective. But we really do have a lot to be grateful for. And if you're struggling in that, in that aspect, I want to just give you what worked for me. 
And it really came about again, like most things in my life. I was such a stubborn cookie where uh, when everything else I thought should have worked failed, I ended up doing the thing that actually is the easiest. And so when I realized I no longer, I did not have control over all the beings that were hurting me uh, deliberately. And, but I had control over myself. When I woke up in the morning, I'd say, I'm grateful to have my eyes open. I'm grateful to have vision. I'm grateful that my, I can feel my feet on the floor. I'm grateful that my legs are strong enough to carry my body to the bathroom. Because think about that. When you wake up, if you didn't have the ability to see and or, if you didn't have the ability to walk, going to the bathroom in the morning would be very difficult. And it really started there. So there's a lot in your life that you may be overlooking that you can give gratitude for. And I just ask you to practice that. Be grateful for your juice. Be grateful for your water. Be grateful for the cup that you're drinking your water out of. Be grateful for your kitchen. I, whatever the thing that gives you peace and solace and gives you a smile, give gratitude for it and speak it. When you speak, energy into something into that word into that feeling into that emotion you're breathing life into it and it takes on a different octave of frequency and that is a really good beginning to love forgiveness and gratitude it's a really good way to live in the now there's no point in going back to the past because it cannot be changed and the future is not yet written that is why I live my life in about a 24-hour window. Outside of that, I'm not making plans. Love, forgiveness, and gratitude is the way I highly recommend that you tackle your shadow work and definitely want to tackle your shadow work. It is beyond time. And you are going to free yourself as well as all beings involved with whatever these events are. It doesn't matter what they are. So you have a couple call to actions. Do your homework on gratitude. Do your shadow work. Um, truly, truly feel love. Opening that heart chakra. If you need help getting clear, please visit us. www.violetlotusenergy.com Check out our services. The first thing you got to do is a QET. Then the rest of the things are optional. The only thing that you can really have without a QET is land and home clearing. And even that really does work best if you're clear, because then you have to maintain it. Um, sold or soulless. My book is available on app Amazon. Other books are coming out, but that one really does have a lot of information in it. It's super easy to comprehend and, and um, put into use in your day-to-day -day life. And truth resonates podcast drops every Friday morning at 6 a.m. I'm on a bit of a summer schedule for August. So this Friday coming will be another episode drop. And then I take a week off starting back up September. It'll be back to every Friday morning at 6 a.m. Thank you for joining me today. And I'll see you again next time. Take care.